This time it's finally time to take a look at steam engines and steam power and steam stuff in general. If you're new to From the Depth or old, you may have opened the menu, clicked on steam engines and went like oh shit, I'm not doing this. That can be completely understandable, but hopefully by watching this video you will understand the basics of steam in all its aspects. To make a little overview, we can start with saying that this section above here is basically pipes and a little thruster. Here we have the steam controllers and the boilers and some generators. And the things with green on, uh, they have a lot of blocks under them, or some at least. Here we have gearboxes of small, medium and large and all its connected assets. So they're divided up like that pretty simply and usually um, you can't mix around different sizes. However, any of the boilers go very well with any of the turbines or any of the gearboxes. So that is something you can mix. But you can't mix a small gearbox with a large bearing, for example. These um, gears and shafts are kind of decided on the gauge and we have small, medium and large, just so you know. Starting out with the basics, steam generates power by burning material to make steam pressure. This pressure can be used in a number of different ways. To be able to uh, burn materials you will need a boiler. We can go with small, medium or large boilers. I'm going to show you the large boiler first, but we're going to check the small boiler later. Uh, because the small section is the thing you will use the most. However, the big one is easiest to uh, give you an overview. So we have the large boiler control. This is kind of the control piece. And then we have boilers, which add boiling area. And the more boilers you have, the more steam per second you will generate and also the more materials per second your boiler will be able to burn. However, it will regulate the burn rate depending on how much you use. Then we have large boiler connector, which is basically the same, but we have pipes that we can connect up. So here we have a lot of pipes we can connect up to something. And the end, we need a large uh, boiler end to make a nice little end of this thing. And here we have our completed boiler. To use the steam pressure to produce engine power, we need to use the gearbox. We have the large gearbox, we go in here and we select a crank and we just place one down here. Then we go and select the large gearbox and line it up so we can connect it up like that and we are now hooked up. On top of this assembly we're going to place a piston. And we need to look at the arrows to see where the steam will come in and place it down there. And then we need to hook up some pipes. And we place a pipe down there and you can suddenly see that the steam is leaking out from the engine. The pressure drops and we are now using 225 materials per second to just spray steam into the air. Not very good. But I'm just very soon going to show you the fix for this after we have connected up this little engine. Just like that. And now you can see we have started to produce power. And you can see the burn rate is still 200 materials per second, but when we reach full pressure, it drops down to 5 material per second. But of course, if we get a breach, uh, we will waste a lot of materials per second. But we can go here and select the valve. The valve we can plop down there, and it has a direction, so make sure you watch the arrows. And the veil will, if you go into it by Q, you can see close when a breach is detected. You can also regulate it to uh, not release steam over and under a certain pressure. And you can also make sure the steam goes a certain direction. 
because this is a one direction whale. If you place it like that, no pressure is coming through. And if we make a breach, it's now closed. And after a while, you will see that this steam... Oh yeah, you can see the energy is lost. We don't have any steam coming through and the engine stops. If we undo that, the whale can automatically open. So basically, whales put them at the exit of your um, boiling tanks and this will make you save a lot of materials if you will have a steam engine breach. Very smart. Now our steam engine is generating 10,000 power almost. Fantastic. And we're using 30 materials per second. We're going to check back at steam engines again because there is a lot of a way to reuse and change and do a lot of interesting stuff with the steam engines. But for now we are going to proceed and check out some other stuff. Because we want some different stuff to generate electricity. And one way to do that is to hook up one of these, a large wheel. When we place this large wheel we're going to select the generator and one step behind it we place down this thing a large generator you can see this thing is now a lot slower you can see in the corner here that our batteries are now charging fantastic if we want our batteries to charge faster we can go in here and set maximum power creation to something lower like 2000 and if we do that, you can see it's increasing its speed and thus increasing its uh, loading capacity. So we have redirected most of the energy to load the batteries instead of creating uh, energy for our craft. If we want to limit the charge rate instead, we can just go in here and set maximum kinetic to battery energy conversion. And we set this to 3000. And now it's up and running again. Later we're going to check out how to build a little propeller, um, a little steam propeller. But we can't do it on this construct of course. But before that we're going to check out this thing, the drill heads. You can also connect up the drill heads to this assembly. If we go here and we select a crankshaft, we can select a little crankshaft out there. And then we can go in here and select a drill extension and a little drill head. And now you can see contact energy used like that, a lot, big numbers. And you can see that contact damage is already some 300,000. So something that hits this thing will uh, get damage, it will just melt through. So it's a powerful weapon. But, even though the uh, contact damage is as it is now, we can do this thing a lot more dangerous. And to do that, we'll need to go and select a transmission. To do this simply, we're just going to click backspace so we can sneak this thing in here. Like that, beautiful. And then we just go to this part and select a resting transmission and select it to max. And we will get back to our previous speed here. But in this transmission we can go and set gear ratio. And we set this to max which is 2. This will make the drill rotate a lot faster and now our contact damage will be a lot higher. It's uh, already... 600,000 so more than double like before. So that's something you really want to do if you're going to use drills. But even though I teach you all of this um, I'm going to teach you something better. Here we have a large crank motor because you might understand it will be a little bit difficult to uh, run the entire main engine to some kind of steam drill somewhere and in that case you can just plop down a large crank motor and on top of that you just uh, you just stick your drill. Very simple. And uh, that is good because inside this little crank motor you can set uh, RPM factor to like max and maximum power. And you can see this now uses engine power to rotate this thing. So this is something you can do with propellers as well. You can just uh, set uh, large crank motor and use 
engine power to rotate a steam propeller or steam rail. And you can see this bad thing is already up to like 800,000 damage almost on contact. Uh, while this is a little bit uh, up and down, but we're, st we're soon there too. We're probably going to go past it, but damn. This is just so much simpler uh, to set up. But of course, for your main propeller, you probably want a nice assembly like this, but that's just that. Now, there is another way you can generate power, and that is to use the turbines. So, we're going to set up some turbines here, and we're going to start with a small turbine. Now we're releasing a lot of steam here and of course we should have set up a whale there. And uh, on top of this we're going to go with a compact steam turbine like that and on top of that we're going to go with a turbine generator. And now you can see that this thing is um, yeah well it generates power. Very nice. It's a very small assembly, but it does generate enough power for many applications, actually. And well, it's 53% uh, efficient, so kinetic turns to electric, and or steam converted to kinetic rather, and that is converted to electric. And that's all nice, it produces some uh, charge. And if we want to make it produce more charge, we probably need our this one to use a lot more power. And we just set the steam engine to low priority and the electric engines will uh, then take like max priority to run this thing. Alright, now it's however the case that we are using too much battery power, which isn't very good. So we're going to fix that and by doing that we are setting up a better and bigger uh, turbine. This will also be more efficient, because this is a little tiny bit more advanced. And there we are, we're going to go and build a medium turbine. So, to start with that, we are going to build the turbine pipe connection first, like that. And then we're going to have middle and windows. These middle and windows have a slight difference in look, but they are the same. And then we also have the medium turbine generator connection. And that assembly goes to the medium turbine, which we can place here. And now we are charging our batteries. And if we look at this little assembly here, it's of course a much bigger assembly and it has a uh, steam conversion to kinetic of 74%. And there we have it. Our engine power generation and our electric power generation is indeed stable. If you require a larger boiler, you will see when you go to the boiler that it's burning the full material per second it can burn and that the pressure in the boiler itself is low. Now we have uh, 3 million steam, uh, over 3 million steam or what it is. And uh, this means that uh, we can produce more uh, steam than we are dissipating. But of course, if we add something like this, well, then our pressure drops. Now, we're going to make this boat a little steamship. So to do that, we're first going to spawn some materials and basic stuff like that. And well, then we shall just try it out. Medium and small boilers can only connect up a steam pipe to the other side of it. So, here we connect up a steam pipe and there is the boiler. So, they're connected up because it is in the middle. Connecting up a pipe here, it doesn't work. It's only in the middle that we have access to the steam. Now, we can actually connect together several tanks like this. So, that's what we're going to do. By doing that, you can have the power generation or steam generation be at different locations and then connect up like that. Very nice. Inside of these control units, you can always set the burn rate to something lower if you don't want it to be able to produce the full burn per second. However, if you do that, it might be better to just go with a smaller boiler. But this is an easy way to limit uh, material consumption if you think it's too high. But again, just build a smaller construction then. We're going to go with a small gearbox. And then we can go with uh, cranks, uh, three of them like that, and they are lined up as they should be. And then you can connect up the pistons to one side like this, 
and they are now connected up in a nice little way. So then we can connect it up by pipes and the input goes in the back and the output uh, is above it. So we begin with connecting up one of these. And now the engine has started. Great, it's working. Now we know that. We're going to check that out later and do some adjustments. But for now, we are going to continue with the propeller part. So here we have the small transmission. And this transmission we can well connect up to the crankshaft like this or any small shaft. And select some shaft and then go with small axis shifting gears. And this little suction cup connects to this piece and now it is indeed connected there. And then we can connect one on top of it there. And now the output comes here. And then we can have a two meter sealed crankshaft like this. We can then place a block like that and we are protected but still hidden. And on top of uh, this piece, we can place a one meter or three meter propeller. So we will hook it up there. And now you can see the thrust and everything like that is zero because well, we're not generating any speed. And to start doing that, we're going to hook up one of the cylinders like this. And to just not set up the AI, we will see that uh, the applied thrust will always be one. And now you can see we have a meter per second of 10 meter per second. That's our speed. To make us go faster, we go in here on the small transmission and set the gear ratio to something higher. And now it depends a little bit on how much power the engine has to give. And if you look at this thing, we can see that the thrust is 3600 of 3600. So this thing is maxed. Now I thought that was kind of slow because we were able to reach the top thrust or uh, by just one cylinder. So I exchanged this for a three meter propeller. And it's only half sticking out, but uh, now we have a craft that's basically flying forward. We were able to fix that with some lead and now we can go in here and see that the thrust is 18,000 of uh, 43,000 and to perhaps increase this we can go into this one and decrease the gear ratio. The max uh, thrust will be lower but we will perhaps reach a higher value so that's something you can fiddle around with. But of course, the engine itself isn't very powerful. So, how to fix this? Just like that, we have now successfully made an assembly that reuses the first steam's energy to the next one, to the next one, to the last one. So all of them are used. By doing that, we can see that the thrust is quite good, but we could reach a little bit higher, of course. Doing an engine like this is the energy efficient way to do an engine and the material per second is two from this engine and of course we need to look at this one as well 0 0.27 so two and 0 0.27 kind of low we're, we're very cheap if we however connect up these engines as a serial connection just like that the steam now goes parallel into each of these pistons and this will be able to make it a lot more powerful. But if you look here, the material per second is now 5 on this one and on this one it's um, 0 0.69. So this means that we're a lot less energy efficient but well, you can already see that the RPM is a lot higher and the thrust generated from this piece is uh, a lot larger. And there we go, I just fixed the placement of the propeller because it was making it uh, a lot, lot slower than it should have been and placing it like that so we have completely free room behind will make it produce a lot better force. But as you probably can see now, um, we're just flying away. We kind of need this insane lead keel to not fly away. 
Uh, but of course, that is stuff you'll need to set up and tweak to make it uh, a lot more stable. There are better ways to do it. But uh, due to the placement of this one, we can now harvest its full power and we can almost reach a maximum RPM. If the engine goes a little bit too fast, you can increase the gear ratio or decrease it if it's uh, going too slow. So that's something you can balance up like that. If your gearbox is generating more engine power than you need, you can set the maximum power creation to zero and this will make your pistons go faster. You can also limit the power priority to negative 50 so that everything else then the steam engine will produce power which will give you a faster RPM if you have problems reaching that level. Uh, this uh, parallel steam engine is a lot less efficient than the serial steam engine we had before. And when we built our first large engine you probably saw that there are serial and parallel pistons. And that is because these can be connected together like, like that basically, um, or, or not like that, but um, you can connect them to each other like this for the serial ones. Can be kind of handy to know. What we haven't talked about are the steam thrusters and I have connected up uh, the excess power from, from this thing and we are going to hook that up to a steam thruster. And the steam jet, they're actually called, they work both in the air and under water. Very handy. It's kind of expensive though, so keep that in mind. And if we just place that down there, let's set it to a one resting drive. Now this makes us dive because the steam thrusters, well, they're kind of powerful actually. And there we go, now we have a very interesting vehicle that's diving and, and flipping and doing all kinds of stuff. So you can set up the steam jets to maneuver and, uh, well, steer and fly and whatever. Now this is just a, it's just set to full force. Now you can set the max steam usage to something sensible if you're just uh, flying a little bit too fast. If you're reusing your steam engine's output as a thruster like this or a jet, you will actually cap the output and this will severely limit the engine's capability to produce some RPM for you. So you basically have to have it at max, otherwise your engine might stop. And if you don't want to risk capping your uh, engine, well then you can of course do the crazy thing and just set up a steam thruster directly to uh, your tanks and this will give you some real true power. Steam jets can be very powerful. Now I connected up this uh, steam jet to <laughs> directly to the steam tanks and we have to have these hydrofoils and well, now we have a very crazy water skimmer. And as you can see, it's quite powerful. Our uh, speed is currently uh, 56 meters per second and the propeller isn't even touching the water. It's definitely the power of this new steam jet that's connected up directly uh, to the boilers. As you can see, this one has a thrust of 4000, but this thing has a thrust of the double. So they're both quite powerful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you learned something about steam and steam power and steam generation of all its kinds. And with this tutorial, you can now start building your steam crafts. And uh, hopefully you make more safe and less crazy vehicles than this one. Or that's up to you. In any case, thanks a lot for watching. This is your host, Jim Odesim, and we're signing out.